Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to a Luthiers Teardown and Giveaway. This is in aid of the Dorset Guitar Museum that we're setting up and, uh, well, this very interesting guitar, should you choose to, could be yours. Uh, and I say should you choose to want it, because it's a little bit weird. And I bought this guitar from Josh, who you've seen on the rest of the channel. He has questionable taste in pretty much everything. This is a weird, weird, weird guitar. And I think I love it. We have got the strange, the weird, the wonderful, I think, Dan Electro 66. Let's have a look at this beastie and see what happens. This is based on not a vintage Dan Electro. It is based on a vintage Mosrite guitar. And the style isn't to everybody's tastes. It is, however, it's, it's cool. We've got a double lipstick pickup, wired as a humbucker, I assume, and a fat humbucker-sized single coil, sort of P90 sounding beast, really. Chunky old scratch plate. This is a, a Wilkinson uh, tremolo two-point system. They're very, very good. Uh, we think this was a, it's a couple of years old, 2018, something like that. Three-way switch, volume and tone, but uh, very versatile nonetheless. Now, this angled neck pickup, the theory behind angling that pickup makes sense. You got higher highs, lower bases, etc., etc., etc. But what I'm looking at here that freaks me out is the 23rd fret. I don't like it. It's different, therefore wrong. Give me a fun fact. Okay. Fun Apart fact. from the fact that you just sold the case back. Fun fact, that guitar was uh, given to Falls, the British, what, <laughs> pop rock outfit. Okay. Um, it was given to them and I got it from their guitar tech because they can't play them because they're bound to, well, the guitarist that got given it is bound to Fender. So, couldn't play it down electro. And let me tell you, Fender's lawyers, they, they, they don't, uh, they use paper, but it's cutty. Uh, it is cool. Dan Electro are cool. Retro is cool. Uh, we've got, unlike the original, there's no zero fret here. That's a, a sort of a plasticky nut. It seems fairly well set up. The 23rd fret is a weird thing. Generally, if you see 23 frets on a guitar, it's because somebody's messed up. Uh, in this case, it is on purpose. And we've got this German carve thing going on. I'm, I've never been a fan of the German carve. And of course, a this upside down Moserite style body. It's pretty cool. You'll notice that this is actually a bolt-on guitar. And uh, those two screws are actually beneath the pickup. So we've got a fairly long tenon. And as such, it's, it's a nicely stable guitar. So the whole point of what we're doing here is we're documenting the strange, the weird, the wonderful, the esoteric, the downright ugly, and the exceptionally beautiful. But uh, I am going to rip this BC apart, have a look at what's inside, and uh, then pass it on to Sophia, who's going to do some fret work and setup work. What is this guitar hiding for me? All right, the action's pretty high and uh, that nut has not been cut since the factory, so that's standard. It's, it's an okay amount of relief. Um, yeah, can't really complain. It's, it's a sub thousand pound guitar. The action here is two millimeters at the 12th fret on, on both high and low E strings. I take that back, that's actually nearly two and a half millimetres at the low E and two on the height. Yes, I cut strings in half. It's just easier that way. They're not going to ever be used again. Tell me in the comments why I shouldn't do it. Okay, so I want to see, we all know uh, about these trims. They are fairly, they're fairly cool. You've got the twin pivots. Um, the way that the 
intonation is adjusted, you release that grub screw or bolt, I suppose, and then physically move it. There's no fine adjustment, except for the fact that there's a little uh, grub screw in the back so that you can set it and cool looking. I remember thinking that was the coolest trim since sliced cheese. Yes. I want to see under here before we take the neck off. And there we go. So it's actually a fairly snug pocket. I quite like that. I wonder if I'm going to be able to... I have to have the pickup out in order to undo that. I'm going to loosely put this in, unscrew the uh, neck from the back, and then we'll come back. I don't want the pickup flopping around. Very short screws uh, on those two. And now the pickup is holding the uh, neck in place. And there we go. Okay. Oh, that's actually some chunky wire there. Let's see. So we've got a, a coil tap, we've got a cable tie sort of thing, just holding that all together. The soldering is okay. Alpha pots, so budget pots, budget switch, but um, do you know, that all looks fine. Genuinely cool. Uh, now, we've got absolutely zero shielding paint in here, so we're going to have to shield that just to make life a little bit better. And uh, yeah, while I'm about it, let's have a look at this uh, double lipstick pickup. Well, I suppose if we've got a coil tap, I'm assuming that's a coil tap, it's uh, definitely wide as a humbucker. Okay, so here's the thing. If you've got a, a custom pickup with a beautiful shape and you want a pickups around that fits, you, uh, well, you have to just cut it out of solid material. So the pickups around is actually lower than the pickups around, which is the standard uh, uh, cast plastic. Uh, what's the process for that? That you'd get for a humbucker. This is just a chunk of uh, three mil acrylic that's been lasered out, uh, holding our very cool looking lipstick humbucker. And yeah, we've got, you know, one, two, three, four, You've got a lipstick pickup and a lipstick pickup, and then on the bottom, on the inside, you've got another tube guiding your wires in. I think that's just pretty cool. Okay, shielding paint is absolutely essential. Uh, it just makes life, this job so much easier. And a good old Faraday cage is also absolutely essential. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, extra paint on the front, just there where the shielding will touch it, and uh, where the shielding plastic or aluminium foil on the inside of that will touch it. Okay, so while that is drying quickly, let's have a quick look. Uh, our nut, our nut is 42.6, 12th fret, 52.3 millimeters, not inches. It's 23 millimeters at the 12th fret deep and 21 millimeters at the first fret and that is an absolutely typical c-shaped comfortable modern uh, feeling neck and modern dimensioned neck josh mm -hmm. this is this you really should have you know shielded your guitar before you sold it to me <laughs> don't you think and you know I also think that I'm going to give this to you to do some fretwork on because... It's bad. Well, I don't know, I haven't checked it yet. Alright, let's check the uh, relief. This is a short scale. There's a little bit in there. So, truss rod adjustment. Again, fairly basic. Modern truss rod, plasticky nut. So. That'll do. Hi. Fancy seeing you here. So, fret rocker. This will locate any high 
or low frets. So this is, that's rocking. That's a high fret or that's a low fret. Same thing. So there's, there's stuff going on here, fully expected. And uh, this is for, for Josh to sort out later. All 23 of them. This edge of the nut is too sharp and uh, is un uncomfortable. So just with a uh, fret end dressing file, just round that over and uh, the meat of your hand will not be injured or insulted. After a weekend, it has dried. Well, I mean, it dried immediately, but you know what I mean. I think with a little bit more money, a little bit more of a budget, and obviously a higher price point, this could have been a pretty damn cool guitar. I, I, I feel the cheapness of some of the parts lets it down. I think an anodized aluminium scratch plate, for example, would elevate this quite significantly. What would you do? If you were to win this guitar in the uh, Great Guitar Giveaway competition, what would you do? And, uh, or if you, were, if you were me and you wanted to customise this thing, what would you do to make this guitar even cooler than it currently is? Leave me know in the comments. Okay, thank you, Ben, for passing me this neck. I'm going to do a level crown and polish on this guy. This actually, this guitar used to be mine and I can vouch for it, it's a wicked guitar. Let's just get this thing playing right, level crown polish, here we go. And for those of you who are wondering why I haven't taped up the fretboard yet, if I have a lot of leveling to do on this, then I obviously have to take any nasty sharps off the fret ends. I don't want to do that part of it with the tape on because when there's tape on, my file won't make it right down to the very bottom of the fret, which is where the sharp nasty bit is that we're trying to get off. If this was maple fretboard, I would think very differently about this, but it's not. And so I'm going to do it this way because of that. That's why. <laughs> don't like this. This is wobbling around all over the place. Ben, I need enlightening. Huh? I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed about these. You're annoyed? Yeah, I've never... These have always annoyed me and I've never quite understood something. Fret rockers? Yeah, yeah. Or Dan Electro? Well, <laughs> no, there's nothing wrong with Dan Electro. It's fine. Okay, okay, so here we go. I've marked off all the frets and I have uh, leveled and everything's been touched. In fact, I can see flat spots. I'm being Super careful not to put any pressure on the middle. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, there's no, there's no pressure whatsoever. Why then does the fret rocker still rock? Is it still rocking? Yeah, it still rocks in places. So like, say, say here, give that a go. Not feeling anything? Yes, no, there's a rock there. Yeah. Okay, so several things. Uh, one, no, this is P PSA, so it's adhesive backed uh, yeah, sandpaper that you've been one. using. Yeah. Uh, but also you see how you've got a lump there? So, uh, we're filming, are we filming? We're filming, hi. Hey yeah, people. we're filming. So, it goes there, and then, because that's been pulled over there, you've got a lump. Okay, now it's just a lump of air, but if you're going over something flat, that lump of air is hitting it first, and okay. then compressing itself down, and it's still abrading a bit, bit of stuff off. Mm. So, your sandpaper needs to be absolutely perfectly flat on the, on 
the instrument. Okay, so let's so take that off. So that's that's first of an I that's an issue. Another thing is if you're using uh, cloth paper that is thicker, and some people do, mm -hmm. uh, then that's got much more bounce in it. Yep. So instead of leveling the fret, it's just going over and you know. Yeah. So you run issues like that. Uh, if you use the masking tape and super glue trick, same thing, you've got two levels of masking tape and then some paper. That gives a little bit more bounce. Mm -hmm. uh, leveling beams will work like that, but if you, you need to burnish it down mm. so there's no variation. Yep. Most of this is fine, but you have, or whoever set this up, yeah. has wrapped the tape around. Do you know, I actually tried that for the first time today because I thought it would extend the life because what tends to happen is these corners hit yeah. and then it, you, okay. you lose a lot of life, basically. So that's, that's one issue. The other, which is far more common though, Leatherman. It's one of my favorite and most oh used God, tools. I thought you were just gonna stab it. I, you look like ah. you were just gonna stab it. Far more common is mm. that the fret isn't actually seated properly. And you go along with your leveling beam and it levels it, yeah. i.e. it touches the top, yeah. but all it's doing is pushing the fret down and then the fret pops up again. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's not actually being held in by the tangs or the glue or whatever. That sure. happens far more often than, than, than not. Uh, this doesn't actually appear to be moving. No. Though, so genuinely, your issue is uh, of your own making, I think. Um, I'm just, just I'm being impatient, is what you're saying. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's all a learning experience, isn't it? Thanks, Ben. It's all fun. No worries. Yeah, enjoy. Thank you. If you weren't doing this one, then I would be, and uh, <laughs> I have other things to do today. <laughs> have fun. Thank you. Damn it, I was walking this way. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. I'm getting quite frustrated, I'm going to admit. I always level crown polish with the neck on the body, and I just find it so much easier to support the neck. I use, where is it, this guy, which is just amazing for it. But the neck is not on the guitar, and it's not going back on the guitar until I'm done. So I'm going to figure out a solution that involves my bench dogs and my neck rest and probably some masking tape. All right. You're not going anywhere, mate. I mean, it <laughs> looks like it's been, it looks like it's been straight jacketed in an asylum, but I don't care as long as it doesn't move. And I guess that's why they put people in straight jackets. So let's try that now, shall we? Ah, that's better.
Here we go, we are polished. It's time to buff. Buffing in a white t-shirt's a bad idea, so I'm just gonna suit up and eye protection up, really important, because little grits of compound will go into your eyes. Give these guys a little stretch. Okay. Um, yeah, 
So in my experience, um, filing nut slots is a bit like buying, owning, and wanting to eat a pear. You buy the pear, it's too hard. So you wait, and you check it, and you wait, and you wait, and you wait, all the while wanting the pear. And then suddenly, as if in a, a couple of minutes, the pear is overripe and sloshy and can't be eaten. In a vaguely similar way, nut slots, you'll go for it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Too high, mm -mm. too high. You'll let your guard down. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, too low. Pear's gone, smush. How's that analogy? I like to have all my files lined up in order here. When I've used them, I'll put them over here. Avoids any cross-contamination of files. You don't want a great big flappy nut slot. Do you know what I mean? Hello guys, here we are. We have our Dan Electro 66 all set up and playing beautifully. Don't forget that you can get this guitar delivered to your door. Just click the link that I just nodded at there and uh, get yourself on the great guitar giveaway. This guitar giveaway is helping to set up the Dorset Guitar Museum. And it's, I, I know I keep saying it, but I'm gonna say it again because have you ever been to a guitar museum? No, do you know why? because there ain't one. So just get yourself on, support the museum, get yourself, you know, a chance of getting this beautiful guitar sent to you. And uh, let's give it a try. And finally, let's weigh this puppy. So she's coming in at six pounds and 15 ounces, which is very light. It's 3.15 kilograms. Light as a feather. Bye bye. <laughs>